Okay. Show me. What is up, YouTubers? Dutch see you in the house. Thank you very much for tuning in. And this is my review, my longer term review of this the Brother Hobby Hyperbola 5 inch ultra light racing quadcopter. And I had intended to shoot this video um, a, a two weeks ago actually. Horrible weather over here in the Dutch land <laughs> in the Netherlands. Today it's reasonable, as you can tell from the backdrop it is windy so I hope you'll be able to hear what I'm saying but I think we'll be, uh, we'll be all right I've uh, tried to find a spot with a little less wind so we can uh, do a review of this uh, the Hyperbola from Brother Hobby so in this video um, I'm first gonna do yeah I'm first gonna do a demonstration flight FV flight yeah maybe two even <laughs> actually then I'll tell you what lipos to use for this quadcopter and what lipos I didn't really like for this uh, quadcopter I've tried a couple then I'll show you what my tune is for this quadcopter not unimportantly it's it's not easy to tune the the lighter the the quadcopter is it's it gets harder to tune the quadcopter right uh, there's more to it than that yeah more to it than that and uh, so let me see i'll also uh, tell you my uh, the pros and cons of this quadcopter obviously in this video now this uh, this is actually my final review of the hyperbola but there's a caveat to that whether this is my final final review or maybe there will be more more on that in the course of this video let's first fly this sucker here we go We are up and away again. So, before I forget to mention this, I adore this quadcopter. It is a blast to fly. I have other racing quadcopters, but they are very much unlike this one. And why is that? Well, it's agility. This is a racing setup, right? And more on the purpose, if you will, on this quadcopter in a minute, but. I have no other quadcopter in any size that has the agility of this quadcopter. Comes at a price if you really, really use that agility a lot. Uh, well, uh, your flight time will uh, suffer, uh, but uh, that's no surprise, obviously. But I have no quadcopter that I can throw into a corner and then have it move into the completely opposite direction in so little time if you will so if i throw it into a corner and then throttle up that is extreme in fact the first few times i flew this quadcopter i was really um, surprised actually at some points i thought that there was uh, a flip of death or a desync but it's simply the, the, the speed of, of, or the ability of this quadcopter to change direct and direction that's so different from all other quadcopters. Now that's due to uh, its lightweight, obviously, but there's more to it than that. More on that when we get back to the studio. But that's the main takeaway of this quadcopter for me. It is very, very exhilarating to fly. Even though it's a racing quadcopter, it's not a freestyle quadcopter. If you just bash it, as I am, it is a lot of fun. Hopefully uh, the GoPro that's uh, shooting uh, me at this moment uh, will also pick up part of the sound. Show you that you can actually hear that the tune is uh, pretty okay. Uh, I have to be uh, honest, uh, the tune looks even better to... Oh, by the way, in faster corners I can definitely see the, the camera vibrate. It, it doesn't really matter. So the quadcopter isn't perfect. And the imperfection of this quadcopter is mainly the vibration. I don't give a fuck, man. This is uh, <laughs> sorry for my language. This is a lot of uh, fun to fly. 
and uh, so yeah, Brother Hobby will uh, update the canopy. I assume that the newer canopy will also fit the first batch ones, the one I have here. Otherwise, you'll have to print something maybe, or just go with the flow, and uh, you will probably enjoy it just as much as I do. Yeah, this is. Uh, very much a lot of fun to fly this quad. So I'm again three minutes in. 14. Eh, it's actually be doing better than I had expected. Maybe the slightly lower temperature when I last tuned the quadcopter, it was a little uh, warmer. It kind of looks as if the lower temperature, it's not cold, but uh, works a little better for this setup. Or at least for my tune. Very nice, nice. Okay, I will land it again and I have a third battery. Let's do some more flying. After that, we'll uh, get back to the studio and I'll know, give you my final thoughts on this Hyperbola. Oh, by the way, you might have noticed from my first landing, you kind of need to uh, switch. Um, uh, air mode, air mode off for the landings, otherwise it'll uh, flip up a lot. It's almost impossible. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, air mode off for your landings. All right, third flight and the wind is actually picking up. So let's get this flight in as quickly as humanly possible. Uh, so yeah, if you were waiting for my final review or uh, FV flights with the Quadcopter, I'm sorry, but the weather was really horrible. I tried to uh, record a flight once in the last two weeks and I uh, destroyed that Quadcopter because of the wind. So yeah. It's not that uh, this Quadcopter can't be flown in a little bit of wind, but there was uh, a little bit more than uh, just some wind and there was a lot of rain and... Okay, so let me see, what more can I tell you about this Quadcopter? Um, I was asked if this um, can be seen as a freestyle flyer. Now, you can basically fly any Quadcopter freestyle, right? Uh, but uh, I wouldn't call this a... Um, a great freestyle quadcopter. See, with its low weight, it doesn't travel a whole lot on uh, zero throttle. If you throw it over any kind of uh, object, it uh, quickly stalls out. Simply because there's no weight to it. Now, can you have a lot of fun simply bashing it? as I am here, uh, yes, um, it is a lot of fun to fly uh, regardless of how you fly it or in what kind of setting you fly it. Really, I, this is a, a great quadcopter to fly. And if you follow my channel, you know that I'm in the process of building another lightweight 5 inch, not as light as this one. And I also have a lightweight 4 inch on its way. I am very much looking forward to flying those, but as I mentioned before, there's more to it to this quadcopter than simply its low weight. This uh, this this quadcopter has an, uh, a, a very interesting interesting a good setup. Which is actually the, its selling point, I think. Not so much the weight, but the components used. Oh, by the way, so so I mentioned it in my uh, previous flight, the second flight. Acceleration of this quadcopter and the ability to change direction is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it is hard to relay in a video, by the way. You might uh, think from the video that it's slow, it's not, it's very fast. But mostly the acceleration and um, the top speed isn't super duper high. And physics, right, the pitch on these propellers uh, isn't uh, very steep. And you can't fly a, uh, a quadcopter with shallow pitched propellers, high speed. Again, physics. 
Also, uh, you will probably want to uh, cap your throttle to approximately 85%. Uh, the, the propellers don't sh um, flutter a lot, but above 90% uh, they don't really do anything more for you. And they do begin to flutter. So cap your throttle to approximately 90 or 85% and you'll be good. Again, you won't gain any speed by uh, moving your throttle above that. Oops, my battery is done. Okay, that's it. How long was that flight? Ah yeah, four minutes, I lost track of time. Okay, let's get back to the studio and, and I'll uh, tell you what batteries to use for this quadcopter. I'll give you my uh, the pros and cons on this Hyperbola and I'll give you the tune I uh, use on this quadcopter. Here we go. Okay, so my GoPro decided that my first flight wasn't interesting enough, apparently. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess my narration uh, didn't make sense to my GoPro, so you, <laughs> you missed out on that. And in my first flight I told you that uh, this Hyperbola I have here isn't a pre-production sample, but it, it's from the first batch. And since then I have told uh, uh, Brother Hobby that there needs to be a couple of changes to this quadcopter. And the major thing about this quadcopter that needs to change, in my humble opinion at least, is the canopy's material. The design is fine of this uh, canopy, but it's uh, printed in PLA and uh, that's a pretty hard material. Now they chose that material to keep the weight of this quadcopter down, right? Uh, one of the design uh, criteria for this quadcopter, if you will, was that it uh, should be light, and it is. However, uh, this canopy doesn't smother, doesn't dampen vibrations, and you'll see, especially on very sunny day, days, uh, you'll see vibrations in the camera. Even if the tune of your quad is perfect, well, as perfect as it can be, uh, you will see vibrations in the camera because of the material of this canopy and future batches of this quadcopter will have a TPU printed canopy. Uh, maybe there will be other slight changes, but there will be the major difference in uh, future batches. I think the rest of the quadcopter actually works out pretty nicely. More on that in a sec. Let me first tell you what lipos I tried on this quadcopter. So these are the three lipos I tried on this quadcopter. One 3S lipo and two 4S lipos. And I can already tell you that this quadcopter is definitely happiest on 4S uh, lipos. Um, I did try me a 3S lipo because, uh, well, uh, I, I suspect a lot of people will want to know how well it flies on a 3S lipo. I should add that I don't really have the, the, the best lipo for the job for this quadcopter. I'd say a, maybe an 1100 3S with a high C rating, which this, the, uh, this is a 1300 and let me see, 50C lipo from Hyperion. It is high voltage, that helps. But um, so if you do it to fly this quadcopter on a 3S LiPo, that works if you want to fly this quadcopter in a sightseeing manner. So if you want to scout out an area, if you are maybe if you want to do a relaxing flight, uh, that'll work, right? It'll work out uh, perfectly basically, but you uh, will miss out on a lot of the performance potential of your quadcopter and I'm um, not sure why you bought this quadcopter if you want to be flying it on 3S. Perfectly honest. So that leaves us with these lipos, a 650 milliamp hour tattoo R line and an 850. Both of these lipos work, but for the 650, uh, kind of goes the same as on the 3S. Um, you can't really use the quadcopter to its full potential on this lipo. The, the, the flight time will be two minutes tops. If you really fly the quadcopter hard on this LiPo and this LiPo is in good condition, then uh, yeah, the, the, the flight time will be really, really short and uh, at the end of the flight this LiPo will be nice and crispy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that leaves us with this one, 850 milliamp hour, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you need to use an R-line obviously, but this is the, the size and type of LiPo I'd use. A relatively high C, 850 milliamp hour 4S, that works out best for for this quadcopter, you'll end up with flight times of around three minutes, 
and you can stretch it to a little more if you just uh, cruise around obviously but if you fly it the quadcopter hard you uh, top tops out at three minutes more or less and also the the lipo won't be super duper warm at the end of the flight that way then the tune i ended up with this quadcopter and i'll put the tune up uh, on screen for you right now I couldn't get to a, a, a be, the best tune by, by simply using the sliders and I think the, the, the P's are all a little bit higher and the D's a little bit lower. The filter settings are a little bit conservative, especially for me, I generally run my filters lower or less filtering. I think that uh, most of these lightweight setups uh, need more filtering. I have other lightweight quadcopters that need even more filtering, so I guess the frame works out well for filtering. But still, this is more conservative than uh, I'm used to flying. But again, this, this worked out well for this quadcopter. And this is with the 850 mAh 4S LiPo I showed you. So this is already a pretty long video, let's wrap it up with the pros and cons of this Hyperbola from Brother Hobby. The first ready to fly quadcopter from Brother Hobby actually. What are the, the cons? Let's start with the cons of the quadcopter because that's a very very short list. Canopy. That's uh, the only downside of this quadcopter I have really found. I have crashed the quadcopter, so the frame held up. I have lost a bit of the canopy over here but it's well it's still held in place by the screw somehow yeah uh, other than that i have had no damage on this quadcopter but still the canopy is probably too brittle and it uh, transmits vibrations into the camera so that's definitely something they will change other things on the quadcopter that'll change i i'm not sure of I don't really need to have things changed on this quadcopter at all, basically. Yeah, maybe this single rear post. If you fly this quadcopter into a, a, a gate, for instance, I can imagine that uh, two posts at the rear will protect the electronics better, rather than having the canopy smash into the electronics. Uh, I haven't uh, come across that uh, problem, but I can see that to be a uh, potential problem. Partly that will be remedied by using a different material for the canopy though. But still, two struts at the rear might be better for reliability of the, of the quadcopter itself. To that I should add that it's light, so any hit will have less impact than on a uh, heavier quadcopter obviously. So again, that's the only real downside for me of this quadcopter, it's canopy. It's not a huge downside, it's still very much fun to fly, but now and again you will see vibrations in your FV feed, especially if you pay attention to them. Now the star of the show of this quadcopter, and that's definitely a pro of it, are these 2004 motors from Brother Hobby. That's their mainstay, right? It's, this is basically a show, show quadcopter to show off the, the, the capabilities of these motors. And if you were to uh, build a lightweight quadcopter in this size, these motors should, should be on your shortlist. They perform very, very well. And um, Brother Hobby kind of took a chance on uh, fit, outfitting this quadcopter with three bladed propellers. These motors can spin, spin manage these uh, propellers. Uh, so yeah, you, you will see that, especially in the acceleration, that these motors can handle these propellers, can spin these propellers up very, very quickly. Gorgeous motors to look at, but they also perform very, very well. And before I flew this quadcopter, I was very interested to see how well this Zeus 35 from AGLRC would hold, hold up in, uh, well, challenging conditions. Uh, the amp draw of this entire setup can be pretty high, uh, but, well, worked out well. So this Zeus 35 is definitely an option if you want to be uh, building quadcopters in this size smaller or bigger so that's nice to see uh, that's uh, that definitely puts it on my list for parts to use on uh, future builds 
and um, one thing uh, this this FPV antenna I'm not sure of maybe the FPV signal often gets blocked by the LiPo or something but the FPV signal left a bit to be desired you probably noticed in my FPV flights so maybe if I were to keep this quadcopter around I'd uh, exchange this uh, this antenna for maybe a lollipop for instance and that's it I'm still uh, very much happy with this uh, this uh, setup a lot of fun to fly and that's my take on this hyperbola from broader hobby very special quadcopter in my humble opinion it looks great and it's a lot of fun to fly and uh, that's all I can say about it again it's held up I've uh, ran this uh, quadcopter into the ground a couple of times at high speed no real problem but again I think this uh, this canopy won't hold up in uh, crashes uh, into gates for instance to end with I told you that this was my final review I hope to be able to review the, the future revisions of this quadcopter as well uh, again there won't be a whole lot of difference I think but uh, maybe small changes on the frame we'll see no so that might be in future videos until then <laughs> this is my final review of it catch you on the next video bye bye